it, this thing has gone on for too long. My money is right. Patricia De Lele is right. At least that's how far as it goes in terms of, some of them being right. But the truth is that we don't know what happened. You know, the, the, it seems to me that uh, both uh, the DA and the Lele have something on each other, and none of them want whatever it is they have on each other to be put out there in the public. This is what it is. So, so the, the Lele cannot claim to have a name uh, cleared when we don't know the truth. And the DA has elections coming up in, in, in next year. It has to start pro preparing its program, it has to start communicating its program, and it has to appear convincing in whatever it's going to promise. It's always touted itself as a clean uh, a party, a party that runs clean governments, but now this thing is, is, is creating a big um, uh, uh, shower that's going to be hanging over its head. First of all, some people think that Delhi has been uh, victimized because of the color of her skin. I don't think that's the, that, that's the truth, uh, but the DA has also said it's it's not as you know as, um, as 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 corrupt as ANC municipalities tend to be, but then it's not going to allow this truth to come out. So it's going to struggle to to position itself to claim you know to maintain that image of a clean uh, a, a party that manages clean uh, municipalities where corruption that never exists. In the eyes, you already mentioned all the elements I wanted to talk to you about, Soli, but in the eyes of the ordinary voter, can the DA still claim moral high ground over the ANC? Well, look, uh, I think we shouldn't take this too far. The ANC is a hugely corrupt party, all right? Uh, the ANC might obviously want to use this uh, to its advantage and point the, B, the, the DA as, as possibly corrupt as the ANC is, but the DA is no match in terms of corruption. At least we haven't seen anything come out of DA municipalities that take it anywhere to, to looking like the, the ANC. The ANC will struggle. The ANC has still got too many things on its side that it, it must deal with, and it has to deal with those things. It's hugely on the big foot. It's, uh, it's harboring thieves. It's harboring people who enable corruption and state capture, and it's even in the, cabinet, even in the current cabinet and in its leadership uh, structure. So so, uh, you know, of course it will, you know, sh try and, 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 and shoot and aim at the DA in terms of what has been happening there and try and get some, some, some points out of it. I don't know how far it can, it can get away with, with that. Let's talk uh, policy level now. And uh, over the weekend, I'm not sure if you would have uh, seen the kind of uh, back and forth uh, fight that happened between uh, the top leaders of that party coming out of the federal executive meeting. And uh, the whole issue was around whether or not the party still supports BEE or the party does not support BEE. How is that, or what is that going to do uh, in terms of um, endearing this party, particularly to the black majority? Because the DA, let's be clear, it is fighting to try uh, and gain the support of uh, the black people in this country. Mm -hmm. Mm. Look, I think that uh, it's very courageous of the DA to, 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 DA to say that, but within, we shouldn't rubbish them without listening to what they have to, to offer as an alternative. We know that BEE has worked in some cases. It has failed in some places. It's been abused to support, uh, to, to empower people who are politically connected to the, to the ANC. You know, so that, uh, we should be, as South Africans, open to somebody saying, wait a minute, let's look at this thing differently. I think the issue of uh, dealing with the legacies of apartheid should never be off the table. That, but how we, we deal with those legacies of, of apartheid in a changing South Africa and also trying to make sure that all South Africans in the future, we can not have a situation that lasts forever, that just benefits one race group. It's not good. We have young white kids, young Indian colored kids who were born in 1995, 96, 2000. Surely we can discriminate against those kids forever. So we have to have a conversation in South Africa that says, while we take care of over the legacies of apartheid, which still continue. How do we make sure that we don't make other South Africans feel they don't belong? So everything now re relies on how the DA is going to unpack what it has to propose as an alternative to, to, to BEE as we have known it. I think we should give them the chance to tell us what they propose, how they propose to, 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 to unlock it, how it's going to be implemented, and how, while it makes sure that all South Africans feel they belong, it also takes care of the lingering, lingering uh, legacies of apartheid.
Just as a final question to you, Soli, the DA has always used the Western Cape uh, government, whether it be the city or the actual provincial government, uh, as a flagship to say this is how um, well run uh, DA governments are. But if you go to Nelson Mandela Bay, there's a looming uh, motion of no confidence on the mayor. It has been a, a back and forth one, but it does appear that there is this final word in as far as the opposition parties are concerned there. How would you say the DA has fared, in, particularly in the municipalities that it took over after the 2016 local government elections? Is it likely to endear, endear itself right. to the voters? Look, uh, the DA doesn't have the same kind of control over the municipalities that it won uh, in the last elections, local government elections, as it does in the Western Cape, where it has total control, as it were, almost. Uh, they have other parties like the EFF, the UDM, which are constantly trying to shoot at it. We haven't seen any uh, evidence of corruption. Uh, it, it, I leveled against Arthur Trollope. So I think that, you know, you, your question is about whether or not the DA is running a clean government. Until somebody puts something out there that says Arthur Trollope or the DA in Nelson Mandela Bay is corrupt, it's been, it's been issuing tenders to friends and relatives and that sort of thing, we can't, we can't fall for it. You know, it's understandable in, party political, in a particular party political atmosphere, they will be going after the DA because they want the, 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 the power for themselves. The EFF wants to be in in control. The ANC wants to use others to get the control back of, of that municipality. And it will happen in Pretoria, it will happen in, 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 in Johannesburg. But uh, as long as there's no evidence of corruption being put out there, like we've seen a lot of evidence coming out for in terms of the ANC people, we should see the same things uh, uh, if there's such on the DA side. And we haven't seen any, any such corruption uh, evidence being put out there. All right, uh, we'll leave it there for the moment. Thank you very much uh, for your time. Uh, Solim Weng, he is uh, with the uh, Brand Reputation Management Advisor at uh, Don Valley, and uh, he was coming to us uh, live from Cape Town.